Juan Pablo Montoya is one of the most talented and successful all-around motorsport drivers of the modern era. As a winner in the NASCAR Cup Series, Xfinity Series, a kart champion, Formula 1 winner, IndyCar winner, three-time Rolex 24 at Daytona champion, and IMSA champion, it is hard to put anyone in this category. Although some drivers have accomplished more in their respective series, like Lewis Hamilton who has won 7 F1 championships, and Jimmy Johnson who has won 7 NASCAR championships, Juan Pablo Montoya has such a broad list of achievements which relates more to that of Mario Andretti. Now that is a comparison that is going to get me cancelled. Anyways, today we are going to look closer into his NASCAR career and why 2 wins and 255 career starts is a lot better than it looks. But first, let's breeze through his entire career really quickly up to NASCAR. His first shot at the top motorsports was at the age of 23 in kart during the 1999 season with a drive for Chip Ganassi, where he took 7 wins and the championship. The next year, he followed that up with 3 wins and a one-off shot in the IndyCar series in the Indianapolis 500, also with Chip Ganassi. And he won it in his first career start. So after two seasons in kart, the next step up is only the pinnacle of open wheel racing, right? That's correct. So in 2001, Montoya would begin his F1 journey, getting his maiden win and his 15th start at Monza. From 2001 to 2006, he accumulated 94 starts, 30 podiums, and 7 wins in Formula 1, with a worst points finish of 8th in 2006. What an incredible career, and he would have surely become one of the greatest legends in the sport if he never left. So why did he leave a great ride in McLaren for an average team in NASCAR? It was rumored that McLaren wanted to sign Fernando Alonso for 2007. This meant that one of McLaren's drivers were going to have to be replaced, either Kimi Raikkonen or Juan Pablo Montoya. Raikkonen was obviously the team's darling, making Juan Pablo Montoya furious, and we know how mad he can get. During the 2006 US Grand Prix, Montoya decided to hit his teammate and managed to take out three other drivers with them. This may have made Montoya think he was for sure out of a ride for 2007, so may have decided to take a ride in NASCAR, somewhat out of rage. He announced to the team that he would be leaving for NASCAR before his contract was up, or even before they made a decision about the 2007 driver lineup. This led to his 2006 season being cut short, still finishing 8th in the points after only starting 10 of the 18 races. So this is where Montoya's journey of American stock car racing begins. In 2006, before his 2007 full-time cup season, Montoya needed at least some experience. He made two starts in ARCA and got a top five at Talladega in his first ever super speedway race. He raced the final four Xfinity Series races that season and finished in the top 23 times with a best of 11th. Not too bad, actually really impressive. He made his first cup start at Homestead in the season finale and unfortunately crashed out with less than 20 laps to go. His 2007 motorsport season would get off with a great start with a win in the Rolex 24. Joining Mario Andretti is the only driver to win the Indy 500, a Formula One race, an IndyCar or Champ Car title, and the Rolex 24. Not a bad little resume. He would compete full-time in the Cup Series and part-time in the Nationwide Series. He set the world on fire when he won in Round 3 at Mexico City in the Nationwide Series in only his seventh start. On the cup side of things, he would qualify in the top 10 in his first two intermediate races of the season and secured his first top 5 at Atlanta in round 4, and only his 5th career start. And he would not have to wait long for his first cup series win, coming at Sonoma in the 16th race of the season, where he passed future teammate Jamie McMurray with 8 laps to go. However, in the Nationwide Series, he'd only finish in the top 10 two more times in the next 14 races. On the cup level, he had collect 6 total top 10s and 3 top 5s. Although this does not sound great, he outperformed his teammates Reed Swordson and David Strumming. Crucially, he also completed over 95% of the laps, giving him valuable experience. Now, Chip Ganassi in NASCAR has always been overrated, only collecting 15 wins in 1,351 starts as an owner, 
and six of those were Kyle Larson, who is currently the best driver in NASCAR. This was not top level equipment, so for Montoya, we are going to compare him to his teammates season by season to really get an accurate representation of his career. The next season, he would go back to back in the Rolex 24 and win it again. On the cup side of things, his stats were dismal in 2008, with only 3 top 10s and a 23.9 average finish, but much better than his teammate Reed Sorson, who only managed a 28th place average finish. As a result of this, this would be when Montoya infamously stated that NASCAR is harder than boring F1. 2009 would statistically be one of his best seasons, most notable for his heartbreak at Indianapolis, unfortunately, when he led over 100 laps, but ended up finishing 11th due to speeding on pit road. He would capture 7 top 5s and 18 top 10s compared to his teammate, future champion Martin Trex Jr., who could only get 1 top 5 and 6 top 10s. Montoya would also secure his first two pole positions in NASCAR this season. And 2009 was really interesting because this was the first season he raced for Earnhardt Ganassi Racing, which definitely helped the team out and gave them a performance boost. 2010 would be the first time he was sort of outperformed by a teammate when Jamie McMurray had his breakout season, winning three races including the Daytona 500. Once again, Montoya experienced heartbreak at the Brickyard 400. After winning the pole and leading with less than 20 to go, an untimely caution flew. He pitted and then lost the lead. He would crash just five laps later in traffic while his teammate McMurray would go on to win. However, just two weeks later, he would rebound to win his second NASCAR race and ultimately his last at Walkton's Glen. Although McMurray would capture more wins than him that season, Montoya finished with 14 top 10s to McMurray's 12. 2011 would be disappointing with only 8 top 10s but 2 more poles at Fontana and Richmond. McMurray would only finish with 4 top 10s that season. 2012 would be Montoya's statistically worst season in NASCAR capturing only 2 top 10s to teammate McMurray's 3. However, Montoya finished with a slightly better average finish. Obviously, this was a down year for Earnhardt Ganassi Racing and not much you can do with bad equipment. However, he made the best of it winning back-to-back -back polls at Pocono and Walkton's Glen, which would go down as two of his best tracks. Unfortunately, he would finish no better than 20th during these races. 2013 would be another year he was outperformed by McMurray, which had one win and nine top tens to Montoya's zero wins and eight top tens. However, Montoya proved more than ever that he was a consistent driver with only one DNF in 36 races, where he crashed out at Talladega with only four races to go in the season. Heartbreak once again haunted Montoya, who was leading at Dover with less than four laps to go when Tony Stewart passed him for the win. Unfortunately, this would be Montoya's last best shot to win a race and would retire from full-time NASCAR racing that season. He raced just two more races, but for Roger Penske in 2014, the first time racing without Chip Ganassi in NASCAR. He made a start at Michigan and would finish his career at the Brickyard 400, his favorite race, finishing 23rd. Montoya would go on and win an IMSA championship after this and would be a contender in IndyCar winning four more times before he retired from racing. In 2021, he still races a couple of races in IMSA, but he's unsure of his future racing plans. So, overall, Juan Pablo Montoya was an incredibly talented driver in NASCAR who won races and consistently outperformed his teammates. Unfortunately, he was plagued by C-tier equipment, and I would have absolutely loved to see him in top equipment with Joe Gibbs Racing or Hendrick Motorsports or another team like that. Montoya's best tracks in NASCAR were obviously the road courses, but he was one of the best at Richmond, Loudoun, Fontana, Pocono, and of course, Indianapolis. He had a great natural talent for flat tracks and proved it year after year. Although he only won two races in NASCAR, he was an extremely talented driver that is very underappreciated. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you did enjoy uh, Juan Pablo Montoya is one of my favorite motorsport drivers of all time, so I enjoyed making this video on him, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. So with that said, make sure you leave a like on this video, hit that subscribe button if you are new, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.